Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Matthew Dyer. I'm the chair of the Board of uh, Selectmen here in Hanson. I'll be standing in today for Tim White, who is not able to come here uh, due to unforeseen uh, circumstances. So um, I just wanted to say thank you very much for all of you to come here to remember those who have served our country and gave the ultimate sacrifice, and to come here to remember those, but also to remember those who are still among us today as well. Uh, Tim wrote a note about why he wanted to do Memorial Day uh, observance here at Fern Hill. He wrote, at the, May, um, at the May 1903 meeting of the Fern Hill Cemetery, it was voted to present the Grand Army of the Republic post-127 with a lot on a small knoll in the Oval area behind me. It was named the lot of the, uh, uh, the on-return lot in honor of 27 soldiers of the Civil War who died in service, most of whom were buried in the areas of their death. The lot was the original placement of the Civil War statue on November 21, 1905. The statue was moved to the Town Hall Green in July 1936, and a new monument was later erected. This new stone reads, in memory of the unreturned who served in the armed forces of the United States of America from Hanson, Massachusetts. The only actual burial on the lot is Charles Atwood, born January 20th, 1835, and died October 12, 1910. He was a shoemaker from Abington, enlisted June 26, 1861, and settled in Hanson after the war. He was a private and was wounded August 30th, 1862, in the second Bull Run in Virginia. His conditions were severe enough uh, and was later discharged for disability on March 16, 1863, from wounds received in action. Hanging in the east side of the stairwell of the Hanson Town Hall is an American flag, and the plaque reads, Service Flag of Charles Atwood. Mr. Atwood was a combat veteran of the Civil War. The company service flag was used at Mr. Atwood's funeral in 1910, where he was laid to rest at the Civil War Mon uh, Monument lot at Fern Hill Cemetery, generously donated by Miss Annie B. Gardner from Hanson, Massachusetts. Each Memorial Day, services are held on the lot, uh, uh, are held on the lot not only to the unreturned, but also to all the sacrifices that all veterans made of all wars. So with that being said, I wanted to welcome all of you today. And um, I will now introduce members of the Hanson American Legion post 226 to bring the flag to full mass, to bring it back down to half mass. Now I would like to introduce um, Jake Wheeling for the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Jake. Hey, I 
Can you all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Now I would like to introduce Pastor Chris from Cavalry Baptist Church in Hanson for opening prayer. Thank you. Let's bow in prayer together. <clears throat> Our Father, <clears throat> as we stand in this place of remembrance, we're surrounded by the graves of brave men and women some young, some were older, who answered the call, Father, to defend our freedoms, to promote liberty. And God, it's a sacred place. And as President Lincoln reminded us, we must remember that those who died did not die in vain, that the cause of liberty is going to continue. And I thank you for the the reason to gather around today in the community that you've brought together. Father, as we draw from our understanding of the greatest sacrifice that's ever been made, when your son Jesus Christ gave his life for us, thank you for these men and women who have mirrored that sacrifice. I pray, Father, that as we recall, as we honor, that we would also go out and live our lives in such a way that would take the example forward and do all we can, Father, in the, in the protection and the preservation of those freedoms that you've so blessed us with. Thank you for all who have given that sacrifice. For the 22 veterans that passed away this year <clears throat> in the town of Hanson alone, <clears throat> I think of the over 300 law enforcement agents who had given their life in the line of duty, the 62 firefighters. God, the, the service people that have been killed in duty in this year, we ask your comfort on their families. And again, Father, may we honor their sacrifice today in Christ's name. Amen. I'd like to call to the mic Tristan Baker, who will read the Governor's Memorial Day Proclamation. A proclamation. Whereas while the nation was still recovering from the horrors of the Civil War, people in cities and towns across the country gathered to honor those Union and Confederate soldiers who had given their lives celebrating the first Decoration Day. And whereas, after World War I, the nation came together again to honor those who had fallen in the service of their country. Renamed Memorial Day, the last Monday in May, is when people remember and honor the memory of all the men and women who fought and died in all American wars and conflicts. And whereas, throughout our country's history, thousands of Massachusetts citizens have fought in wars and conflicts to defend our safety and way of life. And whereas, their legacy of patriotism and dedication to country is an inspiration to all Americans. And whereas, it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who gave their lives, so that their sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim May 31st, 2021, to be Memorial Day and urge all the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Given at the Executive Chamber in Boston this first day of May in the year 2021 and of the independence of the United States of America, the 244th, by His Excellency Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth, Karen E. Polito, Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth, and William Francis Gavin, Secretary of the Commonwealth. God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts.
Thank you, Tristan. I'll now call to the front two selectmen, Selectman Kenny Mitchell and Selectman Joe Weeks, to escort a mourner to lay the wreath at the uh, unreturned lot. So before I call Miss Katie Booth to come read Flanders Fields, I figured to give you guys a little bit of background behind Flanders Fields. It was a poem that was written during the First World War, First World War, by a Canadian physician, Lieutenant Colonel John McRae. He was inspired to write it on May 3, 1915, after presiding over a funeral of a friend and fellow soldier, Lieutenant Alex Helmer who had died in the Second Battle of Yips, uh, according to a legend. Fellow soldiers retrieved the poem after McRae initially di was dissatisfied by the work. In uh, Flanders Field, it was first published on December 8th that year in the London Magazine. The battle was so intense. For 17 days and 17 nights, none of us have had close... Uh, none of had none of our none of us had had our clothes off nor our boots uh, except for occasion and all that time I was awake and gunfire and rifle fire never ceased for more than 60 seconds and behind it all a constant background of sights of the dead the wounded and terrible anxiety least in the line give away wrote McRae with that being said Katie, would you come up and please read Flanders Fields? Good morning. In Flanders Field, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly. Scarce haired amid the guns below, we are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Field. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours, hold it high, if you break faith with us who die. We shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders Field. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. So since our last Memorial Day, we've had 20, 22 deaths of veterans uh, since then. I wanted to read off their, class, their rank, their name, the branch that they served in, and which war they were a part of. Private First Class John Keveney, United States Army, Korea. Seaman Eugene uh, Bridgen, United States Navy, World War II. Airman John Sheehan, United States Army, Korea. Gunner's Mate, Third Class, Harold Mason, United States Coast Guard, World War II. Seaman Robert Godbart Sr., United States Navy, World War II. 
Petty Officer, Third Class, Charles Dibble III, U.S. Navy, Vietnam. Private First Class, Mark McKenna, United States Army, Peacetime. Quartermaster Lawrence House, United States Navy, World War II. Sergeant Bud Talpy, United States Army, Korea. Sergeant Lester Wyman, Jr., United States Marine Corps, World War II. Staff Sergeant Richard Hickey, United States Air Force. Cuban Missile Crisis in Vietnam. Spec 4, John Elms, Sr., United States Army, Korea. Sergeant George Lennon, United States Marine Corps, Vietnam. William Fitz Morris, Jr., United States Army. He was a private who had served in Vietnam. Chief Boat, uh, Chief Boat Swan Mate, Don Pike, United States Navy. Korea, Cuban Missile Crisis, and Vietnam. Private First Class, Grant McSwain, United States Na uh, Army, Vietnam. Spec 4, Paul Rooney, United States Army, Vietnam. Corporal Robert Hoppel, United States Army, Korea. First Lieutenant Richard Holmes, United States Army, served in Korea, Cuban Missile Crisis, and Vietnam. Sergeant First Class Alan Sace, United States Army, Korea. Spec 4, James McDonald, U.S. Army, Vietnam. Sergeant Michael Basket, U.S. Army, Vietnam. Fair winds and following seas to those. And... And please join for a um, gun salute. I want to ask Chris from the Catholic Baptist Church to come back for closing prayers. As we were listening to in Flanders Fields, watch birds fly. I would encourage us all, well not all of us, can do this with uh, experience. Put yourselves into the place of people that have given those final sacrifices. As we pray, pray for their families, of those who were read off today, the mothers and fathers and wives, husbands perhaps, children, grandchildren. Our Father, the words of that poem always strike me. Those three short words in the second stanza that speaks of finality. We are the dead. God, short days ago they lived, they felt dawn, they saw sunset glow, they were loved, and they loved. And as John McRae looked across that cemetery, we ourselves look across one as well. And realize what was true of those then are true is true today. These men and women that sacrifice in our contemporary time leave behind father. Fathers and mothers, wives and husbands, sons and daughters, grandchildren, friends, community father. 
that mourns their loss, that is bereft of their presence. And we know that you are a God who is good. And Father, that you will watch over those families as they draw to you, and we thank you for that promise. And I pray, as McRae also enjoined us to do, to remember that this price that was paid for our freedom is not something simply to look back at, but Father, it is to take that torch from the failing hands as we're throwing it, to carry it forth, to live in a way that honors the memory and the sacrifice of those who have gone before. Lord, we pray we would do that well. We pray, Father, that in the representation of our lives, we would live sacrificially. We would live in a way that would honor you, in a way that would serve others. Help us again, as we said earlier, to model the very sacrifice of our Savior, who died so that we might live. God, may we do all we can to preserve that which you've blessed us with here in this United States of America. We pray your blessing on our country, on those who lead it, God, on the local officials here, that they would know your wisdom and that would sense your hand guiding them. Bless abundantly, we ask, in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. So thank you everyone for joining us today to remember those who had given the ultimate sacrifice and, thank, and coming here to say thank you to those who have served and who are serving this country of ours. With that being said, this will conclude today's Memorial Day observation. Thank you. <laughs>